What's up you guys, it's John John. I know I've been a little quiet the past two weeks. I've been working on a bunch of stuff that I'm getting ready to show you guys, so I haven't really had time to be uploading new videos. I do apologize about that. But today I'm bringing y'all a video on how to import and export with GarageBand iOS. Now there's two reasons I wanted to make this video. One, I've actually been getting asked about it kind of a lot lately, so I wanted to just put out a video so everyone had access to it. And two, in my last video where I talked about how to avoid optimizing performance, I actually talk about exporting and importing with Dropbox in order to be able to essentially double the number of tracks I can put on an individual song without stressing out GarageBand or causing optimizing performance to happen more often. So we're going to talk about how to do that today. Jumping right into it, the first thing you're going to want to do is hit the select button on the top right hand side of the screen and then pick which project you're going to work with. I'm going to select my song 4, which is a fantastic name I'm aware. And then you're going to hit the little button that looks like a square with an arrow on top of it. That is the upload button. And then you're going to end up on this screen that says song, ringtone, or project. Now, I'm pretty much just not going to talk about ringtone in this video because I never personally use it. We're just going to be working with song and project today. So going with song first, this is going to open up a screen where you can select the quality of the upload that you're going to export. My recommendation here is to use uncompressed or WAV file. And the reason being is because that's pretty much the only option you can use that isn't going to cost you audio quality in the end. All of the other ones will compress the file and lower the quality of the audio if even by a little bit. And especially if you're using a mastered file that's ready to be published, you just don't really want to sacrifice any of the quality on your audio. You can also use high or medium quality if you're just trying to send someone a demo or something like that. But other than that, I pretty much just stick to uncompressed wave. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the share button on the top right. That's gonna bring us to this screen where you can select where you're going to be sending the project to. Now you have a lot of different options here. Obviously there's a space that I have blurred out that shows who all you can send the file to in a message, which is pretty much any of your contacts. You then have all of the options for different apps that you can send it to and a more button that will open up pretty much all of the apps on your phone that the file would be compatible with. Then you can scroll down and you have even more options from there. For now, we're just going to select Dropbox. That is going to export the song, which does take a couple of minutes, especially when you're exporting as a WAV file. So we're just gonna skip that loading screen real quick. And now that you're past that, you're gonna end up on this screen here that's going to let you select where in Dropbox to send the file to as well as who to send it to in an email. And then you can even attach a message to your file if you wish. Now the save to and the email to, you do have to select destinations for those two options before the post button will become available. But once you've selected those, you just hit post. It'll take a couple seconds to upload and you're done. That is pretty much it for sending as a song file. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to upload as a project file. So we're gonna hit select select your song and hit the upload button again, and then we're going to select the project button. What a project file is, is it's going to essentially compress your project into a .band file that other people can then open up so that they still have access to edit your individual tracks, which is really useful in the case that say you're working with another artist or a producer and you need to send them the individual audio files for your project so that they can make whatever edits or changes you guys were talking about making, this is the way you would do that. So we'll hit the project button and you'll see that's gonna take us to the exact same screen we were on with the song file upload. Now my general recommendation here would also be to use Dropbox. Project files don't really become very usable once you try to upload them to Gmail, so I don't really use that option very frequently, but I'm actually not going to be able to show you guys how to export to Dropbox today because the current iOS has some kind of bug going on that's stopping project files from being compatible with Dropbox. So I'm going to show you guys an alternative instead in the Files app. So now that we're in the Files app, you can see this screen looks basically exactly the same as being in GarageBand. So what we're gonna do once we're here is we're gonna hit the Select button again, we're gonna select our song, and then instead of hitting the Upload button, we're actually gonna hit the three dots on the opposite side of the screen on the bottom right hand corner hit those three dots, you'll see the compress button. We're gonna hit that. And you can see that created a mysong4.zip file. So what that literally did is it took my project file and zipped it up so it could very easily be sent over email. So once you do that, all you have to do from there is select the zip file, hit the upload button, and then send the project via email. It's very simple, very easy, and quite honestly, 
In retrospect, I actually think I recommend doing this more than using Dropbox because it's such a direct method comparatively. So even when the patch happens that corrects the issue between Dropbox and GarageBand, I'm probably still just going to use this method anyway because I find it easier. So I went ahead and hopped us back into GarageBand so I could talk about the last bit, which is how to import a song into GarageBand from Dropbox. Now this goes back to the video I made a couple of weeks ago about optimizing performance in GarageBand, where I was talking about how I will finish an instrumental export that into Dropbox and then import that back into GarageBand as a single WAV file and essentially use double the number of tracks GarageBand usually would allow for without stressing out the app or causing things to crash or optimize. So even though we're importing from Dropbox, this process actually is going to happen entirely within GarageBand. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new song. And as you can see, I'm on live loops, not tracks. That's because that's what we're going to use to import the file from Dropbox. I'm going to hit new. That way I'm not being overloaded with a bunch of presets that I'm not going to use. And then once I'm here, I'm going to hit this plus button, hit loops. And instead of Apple loops, I'm actually going to tap on files, the middle button at the top. And as you can see, I am a very, very disorganized artist. I highly recommend you guys actually swipe left on these to delete them. Don't be like me. I'm a bad person. You're going to hit the button at the bottom that says browse items from the files app and this is going to take you to your Dropbox where you can see right here I have all of my mastered files, all the covers I've done, all the original songs I've released and I can pretty much tap on any one of these and add them to that horrible list of imports that I've already loaded my GarageBand with. So if I just hit let's say scenarios and then I scroll down and I have to hunt for it, this is why I said don't be like me. I can see scenarios to master wave right here. I'm going to select that and hold it down and then literally drag and drop it right over here. So now you can see that has literally just made it a loop track in my GarageBand iOS that I can then record into my track listing within my project and then use as an instrumental. And then from there, I can just plug in all of my vocals on top of that and really get as intense as I want with layering and adding effects to my vocals and not have to worry about optimizing performance becoming a big deal because I'm not having to worry about an entire other list of tracks worth of instrumentals bogging down GarageBand as well. And so that's pretty much it. That is everything I'm doing as far as importing and exporting with GarageBand. I hope this information was helpful to you guys. If you did find the information helpful or you just thought the video was entertaining, definitely like and subscribe for future videos. Like I said, I was on a bit of a hiatus because I have a lot of stuff I'm getting ready to release for you guys and I needed a little extra time to get that stuff ready. But going forward, I am intending on continuing my trend of weekly videos. So there should be new content going forward for you guys every Wednesday. As far as tutorials specifically, I tend to do those every other week and then I do covers in between. So if you're looking for tutorials specifically, Wednesday two weeks from now should be my next one. For now, stay safe, stay healthy, and peace out you guys.